everyone, thanks for coming out today. So I'm going to be talking about Bruno Latour and his 2013 Gifford Lectures, which he gave uh, Facing Gaia, where he talks about uh, the Gaia theory and the Anthropocene. And I'm going to suggest that that has a lot of connections for those of us interested in questions of animism, earth-centered uh, religious practices, environmental politics, and general future. So there's a couple key concepts I'm going to be discussing today that are in this paper. Uh, one has to do with the Gaia theory and the Anthropocene. Another one has to do with shifting debates around non-human agency and non-human politics. And a third one has to do with some of the ideas about new environmental, social, political, and ethical movements coming out of both the Gaia theory and the Anthropocene that Latour is hypothesizing. So very briefly, the Gaia theory was originally proposed by James Lovelock. And the idea essentially argues that we can imagine the Earth as an interconnected organism or an entity composed of various systems that are interlocking and connected, but put together create an emergent organism which is essentially greater than its whole. And that we need to take the feedback loops, both positive and negative, that come with these interactions seriously in our science, rather than just thinking about one part of the science here, so maybe we consider the climate uh, on this side and then the ocean on this side, but we don't connect the two together. So his original theory, which um, has now become part of what informs what we would call Earth system science, is really taking this idea seriously today that the Earth is an interconnected system, whether or not people believe it's alive or not. And these ideas have certainly proposed uh, much of what we're going to be talking about in a minute in the Anthropocene. But the key idea for Lovelock is that we can think about the Earth as this emergent organism that has been able specifically to maintain a habitable um, environment or uh, homeostasis, as it's often referred to, for roughly three and a half billion years. So somehow the Earth has been able to manage itself in such a way to make it uh, habitable for all sorts of different organisms. And this is a key idea of the theory that um, Lovelock originally developed. So that's briefly the Gaia theory. The Anthropocene, in many ways, I would argue, is a development from this idea. And essentially, it was a proposal that was arguing for a new geologic time period, specifically an epoch. It started roughly around 1750 or the 1800s. And the idea is that in the past, geologic periods were divided by important breaks, species dying off, floods, things like that. But starting with the Industrial Revolution, 1750 to 1800 period, humans began to be essentially geologic agents. And the, the amount of impacts and force, how broad and how systematic it was, first with CO2 levels, and then later others have argued with the signature from nuclear bombs and nuclear fusion, and also others have argued later with this great acceleration following World War II and the expansion of industrial production. Um, but either way, the basic idea of the Anthropocene is arguing that we need to think about humans as a new geologic force able to change the entire planet, not just little parts of it. And because of that, we need to think about creating a new period, a new epoch, to mark this called the Anthropocene. So for Latour, he takes both of these ideas, and what he's trying to argue on my reading is that the Gaia theory allowed for the emergence of Earth system science and thinking about the Earth as an interconnected organism, whether we think about it as alive or not. And that insight and the idea that there are all these interconnected cycles of systems, of energies, positive and negative feedback loops, that Earth system science today really understands better than we did 20 or 30 years ago, and which is now really informing the heart of the debates about the Anthropocene. Without these emerging scientific ideas, we wouldn't be able to have the debates we're having now about climate change um, and many other things. So for Latour, this is important because coming out of his background in science and technology studies, he sees Gaia as the ultimate secular idea to organize a new sort of social and political movement around, precisely because it captures both those thinking about interconnected environmental systems, but also those that maybe have a different political affinity 
that imagine that there is a different sort of politics that's produced by imagining not only the earth being alive, but other um, entities and other non-human subjects being part of the political equation. So I think for uh, folks here in particular, this is uh, important for two reasons. So one, we're talking about the rise of an interest in non-human, post-human politics, whether this is um, you know, animism and earth-centered religious traditions, whether this is talking about cyborgs and hybrid species, transgenic species, um, whether we're talking about Gaia in the scientific sense or in the older kind of pagan sense. All of these uh, kind of discussions are coming at the same time. Critical animal studies doing a lot of work rethinking the role of animals and narratives. Posthumanism, similar ideas. And at the same time, you're seeing kind of a rise of arguments from not only indigenous communities, but especially at the international level uh, about the rights of nature, earth rights. Um, examples in Bolivia and Ecuador and others were trying to actually enshrine some of these ideas into state laws. And also the emergence of uh, wild laws and other rethinking, not only of the legal frameworks, but of basic ideas like sovereignty and uh, what we talk about when we mean political actors or political subjects. So for Latour, he wants to talk about this new sort of Anthropocene geo-story. Um, and for him, this is really uh, arguing about new relationships with the Earth, both social, political, economic, scientific, and in particular, taking the idea of the Earth as a political actor or a political entity seriously. Humans do things to the planet and then it responds, not necessarily in the ways that we're used to thinking about politics, but certainly in ways that we have to respond to with our politics. And so for him, part of this new Anthropocene geostory is about people coming to terms or facing the reality, as he says, um, of the Anthropocene and of these feedback mechanisms that are coming from Gaia or from the Earth back to us because of our political actions, and thinking more seriously about those um, in a political context. So part of the way he wants to think through this project is challenging the idea of the human or the concept of the human, particularly as a predefined, uh, given, unifying, universal concept. So he says at one point in his lectures, it's the human as a unified agency as one virtual political entity, as a universal concept that has to be broken down into many different people with contradictory interests, opposing cosmos, and who are summoned under the auspices of warring entities, not to say warring divinities. So this is really where he starts to develop his idea of the people of Gaia or the earthbound people which he argues uh, is the beginning of a hypothetical sketch for him. These people don't exist yet, but he's trying to imagine who and what and how they would look like if they were to come into being. And for him, these new earthbound people would have new relationships to science, to religion, theology, to ethics, to politics, to economics, basically a, a new sort of political public or a new social compact that would be based on the ideas of Guy theory, um, sort of broadly understood, but the idea of the Earth as a political entity and only one of many different political entities that we would need to take more seriously in our political, social, economic um, interactions. So he does this in part by using the German legal theorist Carl Schmitt and two of his ideas. One is the friend-enemy distinction and the other is an idea that uh, Schmitt develops in the Nomos of the Earth talking about the way that land and the constitution of a political geographic space actually is the beginning founding moment for both law, sovereignty, and political communities. And so Latour wants to argue that there needs to be a deconstruction of this idea of the human in order to redefine new friends and new enemies. In his understanding, the friends are these earthbound people, and the enemies is this old idea of the human. Um, which we can think of as classical, Cartesian, nature and culture, um, bifurcation, uh, climate deniers, people who believe in a rigidly objective scientific view of the world. Um, basically anyone who he's arguing as part of this older sort of worldview um, and uh, problematic uh, political constellation that needs to be broken up. And for him, that's why the idea of the human needs to be deconstructed so that we can make room for these new political 
alliances, social formations, and ethics to come out by allowing people to actually organize themselves around their political alliances and shared values and shared divinities, as he refers to it, um, rather than assuming that in the context of climate change, all humans have the same level of action, responsibility, and impacts from the climate, which uh, he and many others have shown is simply not true. Um, and so part of the political project is actually teasing apart who benefits, uh, who gets impacted, and who's making these decisions. And how do we reformulate our relationships through science, through politics, through religion, um, in ways that are both more meaningful and also take some of these insights about Gaia, about the Anthropocene, more seriously, and do it in a way that would make space for a new uh, sort of politics to emerge. So f I think for um, our interest here, you know, Latour is wrestling with political theory and political theology. He's uh, certainly playing a lot in the religious study circles, um, earth sciences of various sorts, uh, social movements. There's a lot of different uh, concepts that are going on within his lectures. And I think for the sort of scholars here and our interest, really, the bringing together of the Gaia theory and the Anthropocene, religious and environmental politics, provides a very interesting nexus, particularly those interested in uh, animism, non-human politics, whether it's in ethical, legal, community relationships, to start thinking about how do we bring these um, ideas further into these debates, and in particular, how do we make some of the scholarship going on around um, animism and thinking about the earth and other um, entities as both political subjects or political actors and something and someone uh, that need to be taken into uh, a new framework for how we think about laws, rights of the earth, rights of forest, rights of trees, um, rights over indigenous knowledge and technologies, things along these lines. So in many ways Latour is bringing together a lot of different uh, very productive subjects, but ones that aren't necessarily being talked about in the same circles. So my hope is to try to bridge some of these different discussions going on, and I think for those of us interested in these ideas, uh, Latour and this framework provides one interesting avenue for us to think about some of these ideas, both in an academic sense and in more uh, our personal politics and lives. So thank you very much.